Hello and welcome back to Small Soldier. In today's video, I'll show you how to appreciate our figure with an airbrush. If you love things military and modeling, you've come to the right place. Please consider subscribing and hit the bell notification below so you never miss an episode. So why don't we go to the bench now and see what's up. Welcome everyone. Hope you're all doing well. This is part two of my figure painting demo. Today I'll be going over all the techniques you need to know to pre-shade your figure with an airbrush. Most of the time I'll spray my figures as if the light is coming from the top or from a 45 degree angle. So you'll want to always spray the darkest shade from below and your lighter shade from the top. Although this is not necessarily always the case, uh, sometimes you may have bright light coming from the bottom of your figure so you'll spray your darks from the top and your lights from the bottom. But to keep it simple I would start with going top and bottom with your dark on the bottom and light on the top. Don't forget to check your paint consistency on the side of your cup as well. Okay, starting with the hand, you're going to want to spray your darks from the bottom, obviously, and your lights from the top. We're going to do the darks first. Always remember where your light source is coming from while you're working. I polished the metal up before uh, painting and masked it with some putty. The reason I do this is the uh, metal gets a bright sheen to it and you can paint a clear color over top and the metal will shine through giving a impression of glass. With the figure I try to keep it at a 90 degree angle as much as possible and I'm just using a light misting spray. Just going over it, it's better to do light coats and several coats than to blast it on all at once. So the trick here is not to have all the shadows exactly the same tone. Obviously you want the deepest shadows down below and at the bottom underneath arms and that kind of thing to be the darkest. But you want to keep the shadows in the mid, mid area and on the front of the jacket and where sun is hitting you know, those areas as light as possible. Next up we'll be doing the highlights from the top. So again spraying at about a 90 degree angle, keeping it at that position as much as possible and you'll just keep spraying and working your way around the figure and hitting your highest highlights. The reason I use a blue-black 
shadow coat and uh, more of a yellowy highlight coat is black and white to me is just a little bit too stark for an underpainting so I like to start with more natural looking light around all the areas You're really starting to see now how the uh, pre-shading of the airbrush will help to give you a roadmap, so to speak, as you're doing your oil painting. It is a very good technique and I would recommend doing this and well, and you get a smooth base coat as well. Now that I have my lights and darks, I'll be going in with a light shade of flesh tone and a dark shade of flesh tone. Basically doing the same technique as before. And here I'm just placing some uh, silly putty over the area that I want to be masked so I don't get overspray on it. I'm pretty much following the same path I did with the dark and the light. So all my dark reddish tones now are being sprayed into where the dark areas are, but allowing that dark to slightly um, show through. If you don't know of Airbrush Flow Improver, I would get yourself a bottle of that. Either Vallejo, uh, some other companies make a product similar, but it is excellent. It will help keep the tip of your needle moist as you're spraying and you won't get as much dry tip. It's a great tool to have in your airbrushing arsenal. Uh, go out and get yourself some if you can find it in your area or order online. It's good stuff. Make sure you're masking off areas that you want protected from overspray. Silly Putty is excellent because it won't leave residue and it comes off really easy and doesn't harm the paint. I am not an animal! You'll be treating the blue the same way as uh, everything else you've done. Again, spraying from below, keeping your darkest blues in the deepest crevices and keeping it lighter as you go around the figure.
Make sure to continually critique your work as you're working your way around the figure. Checking from the top and the bottom every now and then just hold it out at a distance or turn it upside down and you'll be able to see certain things that you're missing. That's what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of looking at it and determining what needs to be done. The next step is the boots and I always use uh, NATO black or uh, rubber colored paint for black. I just like the look of it better. Um, some feel that it's more to scale. I don't know if that's true or not. It's just a personal preference. I don't care for black. It's, it's, it's too hard to work your way to a black shadow if you're already at black. So I'll always start with about an 80 or 70% gray and then you have a chance of getting in there with some blacks to actually produce shadows on a black item. And again the final step here I'm just matting it down with uh, varnish and this just protects the figure from paint rubbing off as you're working the oils around it because inevitably you're going to rub up on an area and continually rub up on it and it'll wear the paint off and then you've got to touch things up. So I find by using a matte varnish it just prevents all that and it just works out better. So that'll do it for this portion of the figure painting demo. Stay tuned for the next part which will be painting the flesh in oil and uh, I'm not sure if I'll do the jacket in this section or not, but uh, it'll all be coming up real soon. Thanks for watching. Take care, guys, and I'll talk to you later.